Good morning, TwitchCon. I'm Samurai Man, and I will be running Super Mario Sunshine any person for you. And I have a friend with, with me. Now, I'm Wilco. I used to play this game, and I'm going to co-commentate. So, so we should be ready to go in three, two, one, go. There you go. The memory card. So, Super Mario Sunshine has always been like kind of game that people always remember, but it's always 64 and other Mario games people always look for, and Sunshine has been like that. We call it like a black sheep because it's not like traditional Mario game because so many Ma Mario enemies are kind of gone. There's no Goombas, there no, there's no Shy Guys. However, there's Bob Bombs, Boos, but they're kind of a little bit different shape. You notice I'm playing on Japanese version. That's the pretty much the best version out there to play on. There's a lot of version differences. We can point them out during the run. There's like a couple of small ones. The obvious one being the text. And the one that is actually really interesting one is the loading, loading time is faster in uh, Delphino Plaza. For some odd reason, Delphino Plaza loads faster. And Saves a good amount of time during the whole run. The longer the run is, the more time Japanese person saves. All the versions are viable. There's not too many big of a difference. Yeah, like each loading zone, when you exit the level and you go back into the Fino Plaza, it's like 0 0.3 seconds faster and that Power adds up. And Thank obviously you if you do like all of the shines and like 120 shines, science. for example, that's like a bigger time save. But on any percent, like the PAL version and the Japanese version are like basically about the same. Yeah, it's about the same. PAL version being easier because it has uh, other glitch that Japanese version doesn't have instead. But they're really equal. I would still say Japanese person has upper hand because of loading time, but it's still like it's what whichever you prefer. With the PAL version, Italian text is the fastest, and it's actually faster than a Japanese text. Right now we are in an intro intro that takes about seven minutes. <laughs> it's at acts as a tutorial for the base game, how everything works, and especially the new the new feature. They introduce this blood. You have a hover nozzle. You can hover and save yourself in a sticky situation. Yeah, we will see the, uh, the nozzle used throughout the entire run. There's also some secret levels where flood is actually taken away from you. And you have to complete like the level without flood. But we will get to that later then. Yeah. Instructions complete. So here's a little bit more gameplay and then another cutscene, but after that the uh, run will pick up real fast. So we just have to kill this through the piranha plants, grab the shine. Easy stuff in the beginning. You'll be seeing that boss many times, but in a different shape. And that's the first shine of the game. I'm pretty sure that people in chat are gonna spam shine get cool, uh, cool cat in the chat now. <laughs> Not moon cat, but shine cat this time. Mm -hmm. And this is the longest cutscene in the whole game. About a little bit over three minutes long. I remember when I played this game during this cutscene, I would always get my coffee. Yeah, this is like a perfect moment to take a break, what, whatever you need, before our next run starts, actually. The run overall, as I estimate, is 1 hour 30 minutes. It's like average time. 125 is like average time. But on my kind of, on my kind of level, I will be getting like under 1 hour 20 minutes. If everything goes really well, if a much better time. <laughs> But we'll see that. I used to be the world record holder in this game a long time ago. And soon again. Right? You sure? I think so. Alright. As you say. Do we have time for some donations? Yeah, that's sure. the perfect yeah. time. I guess. Oh, great. So we've got $5 from Genku saying, Hi Samu, it's your favorite mod here. 
Can I get some less RNGs in chat, please? Thank you so much. Thank you, okay, cool. We also got $25 from Anonymous. Thank you, you're very generous. And we got a $50 donation from Bruton saying good luck, Samu. Thank you. I judge the defendant guilty. Great judge. I hereby order the defendant to clean this entire island. There's another kind of weird person difference. The voice acting is different in this cutscene. It's just for one part. Another, everything else is completely the same. Because the the judge says shrine sprites instead of shine sprites. So they had to change that for the other versions, uh, American and uh, European versions. The island's inhabitants are indeed troubled by pollution. But the pollution itself is not the main problem. So there's like many different levels during the run. We will actually visit all the levels because in any percent, um, in order to unlock Corona, you have to beat Shadow Morrow in every single stage. So we have to get to the seventh shrine. That was the seventh shrine. And with the exception of Gelato Beach, we have to like do all of the prior ones. With Gelato Beach as a skip where we get to the last shrine and then we can just Go back to the seventh shrine. We only have to do two shrines in the game in yeah. Gelato. Yeah, a long time ago it was theorized the loading zone will be there, but it, it is seriously not there. It's been tested with the European version and American version only glitch called Yoshi Flutter that you can go from out of bounds and just flutter all the way up, gain height, enough, enough height to get to the loading zone behind the gate in a Corona Mountain. But the loading zone is never there until you beat Shadow Mario because he triggers the blood, then the loading zone appears. And it, like Vilko said, he's always in episode 7. So every stage is visited. We're starting off to the Biago Hills. It's the only stage we have an access to. Any extra sign, we don't have to get them at all. So we, we just have to get the minimum amount of shines, which is, I think, 44, right? It's 44 overall. It used to actually be more, like before Gelato Skip was found in 2014, uh, we would do all of Gelato, so it would be like 50 shines. 49? 49, yeah. And um, then at some point there was also another skip in Pinna Park where we would skip Pinna 5. And that saves about a minute. It's called early Yoshi go around, and we go well, we go, we just call that shortly EYG. It is. It, it was originally done in a, episode two. Now it can be done in episode five and three. But later on, we'll explain more. It's a really complicated skip. It only skips one shine, but we take everything. No, I, I think that's like the coolest glitch that we found. Like I still remember the day when it was found, and it was kind of crazy that. All those little things came together and we could actually make it, but yeah, as Samus said, we will explain it in detail when we get there. So now he's gonna get Shadow Mario. He has to get some like pretty early, so he takes like a oh. fast route. I was trying to go for the quick kill. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's like a quick kill where if you like roll out and do an instant spam spray, you get like a lot of water damage on him and you can get him like really early. Yeah, this is spam spray. We can like explain the the movement and stuff. You saw me water sliding, that's the most common movement option you'll see me. And this is Spam Spray, and that will one shot Sado Mario if everything hits yeah. from, a, from, a, from the Spam Spray. Uh, you have to like be really close to him for that to work though, but I mean, as a speedrun, you have to take everything you can get. Yep. And uh, this is the first stage. Fun fact that. This is the only shot that you can intend. So you can just like skip it if you want. The Pianta in uh, next to the windmill tells you like you're going ahead of yourself because you're skipping the first shine of the game. So yeah, in any other stage, we have to do all of the other shines because the shines from the uh, episodes that come on later on are actually not available. This is like the only exception. And as Summer said, it's actually. Intended. I knew that wasn't gonna make it. I'm gonna miss the cycle. Uh, the spider here is actually RNG, so sometimes you just get lucky and he is closer, and sometimes you just have to go from further away. Yeah, I was getting unlucky there. 
He was really far away, so I couldn't get there in time. Le the ledge grab would have saved me, but just barely, barely away. Mm. So yeah, this is the only shine you can skip if you want. No glitches are needed. And he's pretty much like the gatekeeper of getting the runs going on in a Super Mario Sunshine any percent because he has really big RNG shine coming up uh, later, which is really soon. We'll actually not do all of Bianca at once, because there's event cutscenes in the Fino Plaza, which uh, take a few seconds. So we want to get them out of the way early so we don't get any cutscenes coming back into the Fino. So we will actually only go up to episode 5 and then finish episode 6 and 7 later on the run. Yep. Even the cutscene starts at the three shines, so that's the moment when Rico Harper you can open that, and that we will open that and do the another glitch there called travel skip. We'll mention that and talk about it when we get to it. Also, this shine always spawns at the exact same spot. A samurai man obviously knows exactly where it's gonna spawn, so he just ground pointed ahead of time. <laughs> shine get. After five shines, which is after Bianco Hills 5, Bianco Hills 5 being the BD rematch. After that, we are gonna go and open Gelato Beach, and that's when we do the Gelato Beach skip. You see the first shine is there still? We don't have to get it, get it anymore. With the Gelato Beach skip, when you get the episode 8 shine, you, you have access to every shine. So you can basically like, just scroll back even to like shine number 3, 4. We'll actually see that twice because we will do that in Pinna Park as well when we do EYG. Okay, here comes the first secret level where Flood is taken away. And he has to do the course without Flood. Although this is like the easiest one. So. Well, not with the strat I'm using. Oh, okay. <laughs> Save like 0 0.4 second. Nice. So basically he did like a single jump and then like an instant uh, spin jump. Um, like that was the strat he was talking about and it is slightly faster but it, it's pretty tough to uh, to get used to that. Yeah, the time save from that, you pretty much have to have a really really good movement and just not, no mess up with the rollouts when you, and divings so you get the, the right time save. And now we're gonna open Rico. But why? You'll see soon. Right. So the reason why we open Rico also now is to... Because uh, then every time you get back into the Fino Plaza, you'll see like the Rico Kaba cutscene, which loses time. So that's one reason why we want to uh, open it early. The other one... Um, should I explain it? Or do you want to explain it? We can explain it soon. Okay, let me, let me do this first. On the third one, I will bother slide to Bianco Hills. And this is actually really cool. I didn't get it. So I didn't get the uh, water slide there, so I wouldn't have enough time to get the travel skip. Yeah. So I would have entered Bianco Hills while the cutscene starts. And that will save me a good amount of time, but I'm, I'm gonna do the, do the like a proper mm -hmm. route still. Yeah. So basically what happens there when he does travel skip is um, the cutscene of the Rico opening and the cutscene of him entering Bianco like overlap so he basically like warps in front of Rico and then back to Bianco and then just enters the level saves about nine seconds it's also a really cool shine because the oh. movement here like evolved so much over the years like there's always like little movements improvements that were found so he basically just has to collect the uh, eight red coins and needs to go on top of like one of the windmills to grab the shine. Not everything is going well right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not everything is going well. Also, what Summer did there is a uh, glitchy wall kick. So you basically, you get a wall kick, but you go into first person with Y and then press A for the wall kick right afterwards. And Mario will actually do like an inverted wall kick where he wall kicks towards the wall and then on top. Yeah, like Vilko was mentioning about the strats, 
it has developed really far from like 2012 to this 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 era. <coughs> we used to do like lots of ho hovering and really safe strats. No water flying everywhere, but now it's like it's really beautiful to see how how much the game has developed with all the strats. And now this is pretty much the gatekeeper of getting runs going on. He has lots of RNG. Let's just say BD flies around the whole stage. And there's 774 different flying batters you can take. Yeah, I didn't I didn't type it. I didn't say typo. It's 774. It's really crazy because if you like measure the the best RNG, the best luck, to the worst luck, it's like a minute difference. It's really crazy. Yeah, you can lose a lot of time here. Yeah. I mean, the, the really bad patterns are kind of rare, so you usually can kind of continue a run. It depends on how good your time is, of course. But yeah, as some said, there's like a lot of different patterns. Um, if he goes to certain spots, some things are guaranteed. For example, he went to this spot, so it's actually guaranteed that he's gonna go over the wall now. Yeah, because he has no other direct direction to go to. There's, I think it was eight or nine different spots he can stop on. And right now he's gonna go over the wall. We have to wait. Yeah. When he goes over the wall, there's three different directions he can go to, which is between the the nozzles there and next to the M. So we'll see what he wants to do. Also, when someone got the one up there, um, obviously it's gonna give him an extra life. But it also fills up your water, so that's also a really good source of, of water. Yeah, if you have a half empty water tank, you're able to get the water bottle from the enemies, like a Kumis. I'm not good at spam spray today. So. <laughs> also, the tornado that he's throwing there is actually also RNG. Uh, it only loses about like two seconds, but you have like no influence over him throwing a tornado or not. Yeah. So the RNG. Um, additional to the path he's taking. Okay, that's a really good pattern there. Yeah, that's an average pattern. Every, everyone, everyone will take that, take that no. in a run. And another tornado. Like obviously him go up, going over the wall is kind of slow, but if he goes to the spot in the middle, then he can take this really short route for the third pattern. And yeah, that's the PD. He would have been flying around there and fly around in the middle of the stage, but he didn't at all. I think we have actually the Bless RNG guy in the audience somewhere. Mm. I, I've seen him earlier, so we should have good RNG on this run. Yeah, we should have. Thanks, Bless RNG. <coughs> now that's the fifth shine, and Chill the Beach, we can open that. <coughs> and Wilco mentioned about the GPS, Chill the Beach Keep. We're gonna do that. It saves about 10 minutes, and it was found in 20 2014 by Tofal. February... Was it 20th? Or 21st? Yeah, it was It was 2014. I remember it was like February 2014. Yeah. Because that's right before I started playing. I actually never experienced the pre-Gelato Skip era. Yeah, the pre-Gelato Beach, Beach Skip era. Uh, we had to do the whole stage. And there's like been new, new skips found over the past years. Like Sandford used to be the... Pretty much out of Explorer Shine, but now with the new stuff, we will be able to make it faster. But we skip the whole st stage, so we, ha we don't have to even show it. Yeah. I mean, the mechanic that enables that is called Rocket Storage, and we will actually see that in the run at the very end when he gets to Bowser. So we'll, I guess I will explain it when we when we get there. Yeah, sure. <coughs> so with the GPS, we, I, sh I sh sorry call it GPS, a lot of page keep. There's Many different methods, and I will be trying one time the harder method I've been doing in, in my runs. I only have one drive for it with the co coconut, because if, it, if I fail it, I have to get a new one. So let's see how it goes. Yeah. So basically, when we did Jalauskip prior, we would just uh, run against the coconut, but um, if you actually do a backflip, it's faster, but it's also like really hard to wreck it. Let's see. Very Got nice, it. first try. Yeah. I 
like that strat. Mm. It's really, it's really nice looking, but it costs so much time if you fail it. Yeah. I wouldn't have clipped there. I would have started hover late. Anything would have gone wrong. It saves good amount of time though. So here I have to select the seven, ever seven shine. Yeah. So, uh, so with like the coconut, if you do the normal method, it just falls down. But if you do the backflip, it actually like rolls down into the water and. Fruits actually despawn when they fall into the water in this game, so you would have to go all the way back to get another coconut, so that would lose a lot of time, and that's pretty much a reset if you go for that threat, so... Yeah. And that's the first shot Mario. Then we are done with this stage. Also, I was in a first person, so Mario wasn't looking at the, the camera. In a first person, you can just make him look around the whole stage and mess around with the, <laughs> the fun pair. Uh, that's a Japanese-only glitch, right? With the camera? No, okay. it's not. It's not. Okay. So now, we usually would have to get the rocket nozzle to get into the shine gate. Um, but with some uh, first-person wall kicks, basically, Mario goes forward. But if you uh, go into first person, you can actually change your tra trajectory and then you can actually just walk you off the wall. Yeah, with enough speed, I will be able to get the ball kick. If I didn't have enough speed there, I would have just hugged against the ball and nothing happens. This is JP a person only. The, the hover nozzle thing there. Uh, these jumps are also RNG, so... First one was a good pattern, this one... It's okay. Yeah. It's also good, but if you would go to the left side, then it would be better. But the most important one is the last one. Let's see where he's going. Oh, close. Okay, he's going left. Alright, unfortunately he got the bad energy on this one, but... It's maybe like... I'm actually not even sure, 5 seconds or something? It's about 5 seconds, yeah. Mm. The RNG is in a huge role in this game. It can like, just lose your runs. And the pause there is to... Close the blood text box, then the shine appears. Because usually it would be a text box, um, I don't even know what it says, but yeah, if, if you just pause in the right moment, then uh, the cutscene will be skipped. Uh, I mean the, uh, the, the text box. The text box, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a very minor time save, but again, we have to save like every little bit in this speedrun. Next shine, Venus Demo, auto scroller, nothing going on. If there's any donations, feel free. Yes, we have a donation from a not very anonymous anonymous sending us ten dollars and saying, Hey TwitchCon, ESA Chat and Samu, got here just in time for your run and behind you in the front row cheering you on, Shine Get. Thank you. Thank you. Shine Get. So basically, no matter how fast you finish a race, Piantismo is always going to finish at the exact same time. So you can uh, like play around and see what you want to do and then just make sure you finish in time. The music is not playing in a Japanese version <laughs> and there's no one pair as well, so... Make sure you touch the black if you play on this person. Because <laughs> mm. on the English version there's like a little jingle, so you will know that you actually hit the flag, but it's not there in the Japanese version, so you have to really look at the timer. Like, I remember runs where I would just not touch the pole and then just lose the run to Piantissimo. I've done it too. I think we all have. At some point, yes. <coughs> You're just so focused on a run, then you just forget the timer. It's 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 in a, the bottom left corner, then, but it, you, you don't pay attention to it. The most common one is probably you no know, pay. That can, that can happen on. So this is not really a secret level, but you lose a blood. Yep. And uh, there's many, many, many different ways to do this shine. And I'll be trying the hardest one. I hope I don't die, because I have, I have a backup. I don't have a backup for it. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. No worries. So I was supposed to get a GWKD, which is a glitchy ball kick type. But I messed up the inputs. So basically it used to be an IL strat that would you do just for like a single shine. But it recently like also got into RTA. And like I explained earlier, the glitchy wall kick where you uh, go into first person and then get you wall kick towards the wall. 
Yeah. <coughs> and if you press B, you can also dive. So you do like a wall kick and a dive at the same time. Yeah. And you have to do all that inputs within a three frames of each other. Yep. So you don't have that. It's a really tight pin, though. Next sign, chain jump. Small RNG, there's small luck, but it's not too huge. It's just the direction he wants to go to. He goes left, right, so it's like okay. Yeah, I, I think the different RNG patterns are only like one second that you lose. Yeah. yeah. The right one being the slowest, but it's really just uh, a small time here. I'm holding a chain and holding four apart because that makes the chain jump move faster. And we're gonna make him to go to, to go to the pot. So yeah, the chain jump basically always tries to avoid you, so we just have to get ahead of him and he will always take the path that Mario is not standing in. Nice. There I was forcing him to the pot, then with the chain with the right time with the chain grab, he just jump jumps to the pool. Next shine. Uh, we don't have Yoshi. You're supposed to have Yoshi at this point of the game, so you're able to enter the next secret shine. There's some gel uh, over the secret, so you are supposed to actually spray that with Yoshi so it disappears. But someone's gonna do a trick to actually clip into the mushroom and the loading zone. You can get a water slide on a bridge, but it's like really scary because if you water slide too far, you're gonna clip through. That's why you see me hover most of the times. Just for sure. Uh, nice, not bad. The trick is called Yoshi Skip. It's been sticked around since like 2011. It's the, one of the oldest skips in a game. By, bound by accident. You, you basically just um, go over the mushroom and then there's like the hitbox of the tree and it pushes you like into the mushroom hitbox. Oh. Wow. That should make it. <laughs> Not uh, barely. That's a called early cycle, but I didn't like had the right angle there, unfortunately. So I, we died. Yeah. So basically, the truck is like running around, and it's random if he stops or not. And I think it's about like a ten percent chance to actually get early cycles. So. Yeah, it, it is about ten percent. Saves uh, about twenty seconds. It's completely R completely RNG if he stops for two, for a certain amount of time in a in a certain spot. Again. <laughs> okay. Don't roll me now. That should be good. That's better. So you solved me. He threw me backwards because I was pressing the Y button. For some reason, pressing the Y button, with co which goes to first person, it throws you backwards. No, no reason. No, no idea why. Because <laughs> uh, usually the tracks will just throw you in the direction you're actually facing, but yeah, with, with the Y press, as someone said, he will actually throw in the opposite direction. I can't believe that you got Oli Saka twice there. <laughs> it's hey, so it's, it's less RNG. It is indeed. This shine, there's 10 piantas we have to save, and we have a timer. You wanna explain this? Yeah, I will explain this. So, um, Basically, we have to like clean up all the 10 piantas and then go back to this uh, pianta in the beginning to get the shine. Uh, what Samuel is doing here is he's actually like pre-spraying them um, because they have to get out of the, the ground when you clean them. But there's a certain time window where you can't clean them when they get out. So you want to actually unlock them early and then finish them off later. So for example, here he's going to spray all the way over the wall. You want to lock it early. Nice spin jump here, and then... Nice. And this shine also evolved like so much. Like I still remember like the really old days when I was just going to Piantas and then uh, clean them off. 
Nice. But like all the different pre-sprays, like the spin jump there of the cliff, like that was all found over time. I think the world record correctly for this sign is 219. 218 I think for the safest. My personal best is 215, left in a timer. You had like a 21196. I remember when I started in 2014 it was 21005 by Power Shade. Yeah. And he was the only one having a 210 and now that's not even considered like a really good time anymore. Yeah. In my, when I was running the game at the, at the highest level as a world record holder, I would get 207, which was the, like, the best time you can get. Now, now it's just like average. <laughs> yeah, and there's like no new uh, technique or anything found. It was just optimization after optimization to get better movement and just go faster. I got it. That's a quick kill. And that's really hard. Not only have you have to be like really close to him, but you also have to like instantly spam spray when you roll out. So Mario's doing like a somersault, and then when Flood is actually facing the ground, that's when you want to spam spray, and he actually got it perfectly there. Yeah, that saves not too much time. If he bonked there, you get a super bonk from a Shadow Mario. Super bonk is like you stand still for like a couple of seconds because of Shadow Mario. It's really weird bonk. And now we have an another skip coming up. Let's explain that after. Mm -hmm. That should be good. Oh no, I died. Too bad. I was just debating you guys. <laughs> That's the cutscene skip. Uh, should I explain it or...? Yeah, you can explain okay. it. So basically what he did there, he went out of bounds and at some point there's like a death plane where if you stand on a death plane for 30 frames, it will actually kill you. So I guess the developers knew that you could glitch out of bounds and it would be stuck there, so they inserted the death plane there. And he did it like a setup where he set up with the wall in a way that he could just hold left after he ground pounded. It was also the precise timing. And then he actually died on the same frame as he entered the cutscene. And that's how he actually skipped the cutscene. Yeah, and uh, the skip was found by Hani SM64, who also ran the game a long time ago. Hani is a Japanese runner of the game. And we just call it Hani Skip. That's how we stick with the name. Should hit it. So yeah, he's actually pre-spraying, so he's gonna get a rocket to shoot, and then uh, he's gonna get another rocket from like far away. And the reason he pauses there, this is another cutscene skip. It's only, it's only possible with the Mega Bowser bite for some reason. So you basically, right before the cutscene would start, you actually go down in the menu and it actually says exit error, so you would exit the level. But for some reason, for those two Mecha Bowser cutscenes, it actually s just skips the cutscene straight up. And those are like, I think one minute, one cutscene is like one minute, so... Yeah, yeah it's above one minute. After the fight, you have the one of the longest cutscenes in the game then. Mm. If you have any donations, feel free. One of the secret level coming up. While we're waiting for some shiny donations, let me draw your attention to the fact that we are over $3,500, which is amazing. Woo! Oh, sorry. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, please donate to make the whole audience shout Shine Gets with the next shine. I think the audience will be up for that, right? Right? Cool. Donate. I'll get that one up there. <laughs> so yeah, basically uh, those blocks are on a cycle, so you could do movement to get there really fast, but um, you wouldn't be able to like finish a shine any faster because you still have to wait for the second platforms to uh, actually spawn. Yeah, and even Tulas is the speedrun, which is uh, like the, the emulator made a robot run. 
that shows like the perfect run, it even cannot make the cycle. <coughs> this next shine has developed quite a much over past years. There's like has been like five or four different routes, and up between the newest one that not many people wants to do for some reason. It's not too difficult in my opinion. The previous route in my opinion was harder, and thus. Does Dulas is a speedrun, does this route, but obviously better than me. Let's hope I get it. It's really cool looking. There's a red coins on a ship, and the movement is really nice here. So I was supposed to get that third red coin, but now I have to get it like this. Oh. Hmm. Didn't go to quite well. Yeah, unfortunately he got a butt slide there, and if you do that you can actually not hover out of a butt slide, so you fall away down. Yeah, you cannot hover, you can't do anything. Oh well, let's just go easy then. So the fastest that's that would have been the fastest route, but just a couple of mistakes just makes the the route not work anymore. Like it uses like very <coughs> precise timings of like the ships going around. So one little mistake or being just a little bit late or anything like that will like screw up the thread entirely, so <coughs> after the this shine, uh if you have always wondered how do you unlock Yoshi in this game, it is Pina Park 4 that unlocks Yoshi for some odd reason it's that shine. And we'll be we will be needing needing Yoshi to get the Pina Park 6 episode, the the secret, EYG, it's coming after this shine. The most like complicated glitch in a game. There's so much stuff going on, so it's really hard to explain in one go for me. That's why I let Will Will go to do it. Yeah, I hope I can do it, but yes. But first let's go to the shine, because... Uh, so here's the five turtles here, and someone's actually gonna try to get all of them at once, so the cutscene only plays once. I can save it. It's fine, nice. That's the one cycle. Yeah, so basically, if you would not get all the five turtles, you would have to uh, wait for the cutscene to be over. And during that time, the turtles can actually walk around. And then sometimes you are unlucky and the turtle is like all the way in the water or something. So it's always nice to get like the, uh, the one cycle here. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna already start to explain EYG because it's like a really complicated trick. So, yeah, we're gonna go to episode three, and that's like confusing already on its own. Yeah. Like, why? So, yeah. yeah. Before you do that, can I read a quick donation? Yeah, sure. sure. So, we got $5 from Anonymous saying, Cool cats, cool cats, shine gets, cool cats. Which <laughs> means that the audience is going to shout, Shine gets, with the next shine. Okay. Okay. Great. So we've been actually going back to episode three. We have already done episode three, but we're actually not gonna go into the park because there's two different loading zones. Like there's the loading zone outside of the park and inside of the park, and you have to like go through the loading zone. But we will actually bypass that. So now he takes some fruits. Um, basically, <laughs> almost got unlucky. Yeah. And depending on what fruit Ma uh, Yoshi eats, he has like different colors. And if you spray enemies, they turn into platforms, but they behave differently. So, for example, if he's pink, then uh, the platform will stay there. If it's orange, it's gonna go up. And if it's purple, then it's gonna go horizontal. Now he's using a platform to like clip through there. And now he's gonna get on a platform as too. The thing is, the uh, physics of the game actually stop here. Like, there's like a void that you can't bypass. Yeah, this is invisible war. I can't do anything no. but I'd stand on this platform. Yeah. Like, if he would jump off the platform, he would just be stuck mid-air and couldn't do anything. So Yeah, I could even soft lock the game by accident. And that's really unfortunate no. if it happens. No. But it's not over. We have a secret left. No. 
Oh, I didn't get it. Okay. I'm just gonna try the harder strat. I wanted to do the harder strat where you go over top to the middle, but now I'm gonna do over top to the right. It's fine, we have three lives still. You can explain. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm still gonna explain EYG a little bit. Yep. So, there's like the void where you can't uh, get over, but it happens that if the platform spawns and goes over the void, then uh, you can stand on there. And it just happens to be that the platform like barely reaches the carousel where you can go in. And for some reason, just that carousel, that's the only place in the park that actually has like physics that work. Yeah. And the reason he ate a fruit earlier, like the papaya, Mm. So, I get. so the reason he ate a fruit earlier, the papaya, is to so end. he would turn orange because only as an orange <laughs> Yoshi will get into the secret because that's the one that's missing. Mm. And he did something that's only on the PAL version which is called fruit storage where he would eat the papaya but before the papaya reaches uh, Yoshi's mouth he would like dismount Yoshi. And that way the next time he would press B, Yoshi would actually eat the fruit. Yeah, I would have to. <coughs> I would have to make the platform, the purple platform, before I eat the fruit, because only pur purple platform, platform moves forward. Yeah, and the the orange one moves upwards. So he, there's like a lot of things to it. Like we were just trying to explain it, but there's even more to it. But there's just not enough time for that trick. Yeah, it's really complicated. That was on a quick kill. Going, Shadow Mario can either go right or left. But I chose the right one because it's it's a little bit faster, but harder. And that's been up work. We have 20 shines, so no, we cannot skip any event cutscenes anymore. 20 shines unlocks Noki, and after we save Yoshi, we will always get a Noki event cutscene. If there's more donations, feel free to greet them. Yes, we have a new donation. Um, Anonymous donated $14.20 saying cheers from Estonia. Thank you so much. Uh, here comes the first blooper fight. We're actually gonna fight him oh. twice. <laughs> um. ah, so that would have been really hard strat I go for. Just wanna wanted to try it. Save Saves like a second, it's not too bad. So yeah, Rico Harper, there's no RNG, no luck involved in this stage. But two boss fights, uh, the same the same guy though. Mm -hmm. So basically, the intended way is to actually rip out his tentacles and then leave him just with his mouth. But we just spray him early and then clean him up and we can actually just finish him without doing any of that. Uh, this boss fight is actually there three times in the run, or uh, in the game. But in the run we can actually skip the third one in Oki. We will get there later and then there's like a, a clip that we can use to avoid the fight. Yeah. Shine get. I really like the next shine because... Mm. Um, basically, next shine you're supposed to have uh, a blooper race, but at some point, there's certain checkpoints you need to hit, so you can't like skip like the entire course. But it's actually slightly faster to not use a blooper and use water slides, and it's really good movement. Yeah, it's called blooper less when we don't even use a blooper at all. We don't even enter the secret with the blooper or the the super. There's like some ink in front of the entrance, so unless you have a blooper, you shouldn't be able to get in. But you can like change direction in first person when you fall down here. Like and that? Then just hover in, nice. Alright. Now he starts the timer, and he needs to get to the checkpoint, so you will see him go to like very particular spots. Here's a checkpoint, and then he goes to the next one, and then uh, he can like finish the race. And it is faster than uh, using a blooper for sure, if you do it optimally. Yeah, about like less than 20 seconds or so, 
then you're faster than a blocker. <coughs> like, the blooper time's are actually higher, but because you start the race earlier with the blooper strat, you have to actually get a better time to actually save time, but I definitely save time there. Next sign is, I think, the, the shortest sign in a game that is not Shadow Mario. There's a sh there's a shine sprite inside a cage, the huge gates. You will you will have to go over like all the way to the up up in a Rico Harper to enter it casually. <coughs> but there's a way we can go underneath just to skip everything. Really fast shine. So they made like all this parkour stuff with like trampolines and everything to get on top of that cage, but uh, unfortunately we speedrunners just ignore that and. Just go from underneath. <laughs> Next shine is a secret shine. Every sh every level has at least one secret shine. Some has some has two. Where you lose the blood. It used to be the the most easiest secret in a game outside, excluding Bianco Three. But now with the harder strats, it's like. That just don't sleep on it. It's it can be hard sometimes. There's a si every secret has a cycles with a band on with the hard with the faster strats, and I have to make those if I want to get the the best movement. So yeah, he's just gonna walk it up here to get into the secret, and then uh, let's see how he does here. Not too, not too bad. And there's still harder secrets coming up. It only looks like dive rollouts, but if you like miss time one of them, you're already not gonna make the cycle. So you really have to be on point with with your roller timings, and then uh, with the spin jump at the end, that can also like if you're a tiny bit late, you might just clip through or not make it. So yeah, that was pretty nice. We have a good amount of one ups, so game over shouldn't happen. I guess we can talk about the game over in this game. Uh, you have a memory card for a reason, and we started the, with the memory card because. If I happen to have a zero lives, I will save the game because game over brings you back to the last save. And in our case, the last save is Air Street. Ooh. That's a really weird hitbox from the blooper. But yeah, if you came over in this game, pretty much the run is over. Without the memory card. Without the memory card. Yep. So basically, the reason why we don't use the memory card is because every time after we collect a shine, there's like a text box that asks you if you want to save or not. And that actually loses time. So if you have the text box out, it just says that you can't save, you don't have a memory card, and you can click it away faster. So that's the reason why we don't use a memory card on high level in the sunshine. Yep. Only 120 shines is will save time, but this is not 120 shines, so we don't have to explain that. But there's a reason we use a memory card for 120 shines. Only for that, I think. Hmm. Next shine, the red coins on the water. I remember having so much trouble as a kid with this shine. Like, I would be able to get all the red coins, but then the shine, that was another thing. <laughs> the shine spawns in a location where you get the blooper. And getting on that, it was, it was really hard for some reason. You wanna explain the blooper colors? All right, I can explain that. Yeah. Um, so the bloopers are of like different colors. Um, they have all the same top speed actually, if you like call forward all the way. Yeah. But um, some like starts a bit slower. Like the purple one, for example, is like always top speed, but it's like really hard to control because it turns like a lot slower than the other ones. Uh, I think the yellow one is like it jump doesn't jump quite as high or something. Like the jump just feels different. It's 
I'm not, I'm not too sure about the yellow. I've never really tried it, but the purple is the first. You have the first handling as a, and a top speed is always max. And I mean, obviously, as a child, you would go on the purple one because you think it's the fastest. But the green one just has the best handling for sure. So. Yeah. And here I'm not holding the joystick because if I hold forward, I have a top speed and that will, make, that will kill me. Yep. So basically, if you're on a blooper and you hit a wall, if you are below top speed, then you just get stuck and you don't get killed. But if you hold forward all the way, then you just fall off and you have to redo the level. Yeah. Every time you die in a game, uh, in this game, in a level inside, uh, you will just kick out of, out of the level. But in a secret level, you're just gonna start over the secret level. So it's like more likely to actually die on a secret level, but it also loses less time because you, as someone said, you get like spawned right back into the secret if you die on a secret level. And that's pretty much the easiest shine in a game, I would say. All you have to do is just hold forward and start spraying when he runs away. It's it's so easy, shine. That's the, pretty much the quick kill we always go for. The spam spray quick kill ex ex exists, but I believe it's frame perfect. So that's why you never see anyone doing it. Every Shadow Mario has a quick kill, some, some sort of quick kill. So yeah, and now we're actually going back to Bianco, because as I said, like, we want to avoid the event cutscenes, uh, so it's actually faster to like return to Bianco Hills later than doing it all in one go and getting like those two extra cutscenes. Yeah. This is a dirty late secret. One really sort of like hard secret, just really hard, a couple hard jumps and that's it. The secret itself is not too bad, I would say. But uh, I, like I said, I will try the, the harder ones, though... I don't know about the hard ones. The hard one. We'll see. We'll see. All these secrets are not uh, like easy at all because you lose the blood. There will be the turbo nozzle, but we don't need that. That's a that's a one jump. We have still one more. Mm -hmm. So he went into first person to change his angle because you have to be kind of frontal to the wall to actually get like the wall kick. So he had to like white turn there. I'll be sad if I fail this, but we'll see. Got it. Uh, no. It's fine. I was supposed to get the out of the first person there and. Uh, Make the faster cycle, but I messed up the timing, so I had to take it easy. That would have been uh, really cool if I got it, but <laughs> just a small miss time. So yeah, he did a glitchy wall kick dive there, so we, he went into first person. The the hard thing is, if you go into first person, you can't roll out immediately. There's like a little delay on it, so mm. you have to like time that, and it's kind of hard to tell sometimes. And it's like pretty. Uh, because you, you want to make the cycle, so you want to roll as early as you can. But at the same time, you also have to wait for the delay. Yeah, yeah and when you go for the Cheetah Pulugeti, Glitchy Wall Kick type, like I mentioned, it's 3 frame window, so if I fail any inputs, I wouldn't have got it at all. That would have been a quick kill, but I mistimed the inputs. But it's still good, it's still fast. So that's Bianco Hills. We have two stages left, so we're pretty much entering the late game. Late game signs. Serena Peach and Noki Pay are left. Yeah. Serena has a lot of RNG, so. Yeah, two, two RNG bosses that can just like. You're in a good pace, then these two bosses are like, nope. Not today, man. I'm sorry. And now we finally get Yoshi. Like, we've seen that cutscene like 10 times or something. And. Conveniently enough, there's a banana right on the tree, so we can just spam spray. Because we have to get Yoshi to eat the pineapple to actually unlock the level and get into the vibe. Yeah, Yoshi always wants the banana in a Delphina Plaza when you save him. Always. 
Usually in other levels it's like random which fruit he wants and you have to check, but for this one it's always a banana. So yeah, nice. and after he save him, he spawns next to the Rico Harper roof. Then he wants like anything, anything. Now this is the orange chip boss fight, Manta Ray. So basically there's a Manta Ray coming, you have to spray it, so it splits up into smaller Manta Rays. And the direction the Manta Rays are going is RNG, so they will like spread apart. There's two phases to it, there's like the purple phase, the second phase. And that one makes it so all of the Mantas come towards you. So you want to enter that phase as early as possible, so they don't spread too far apart. Lots of spam spraying here. And he was waiting a little bit so the Mantis would like turn towards him. So he would get a better chance of getting all of all of them. And so water management is important, he just went back into the pool to like refresh his water. There's one hiding somewhere. Yep, I can see it, but yeah. it's there. Yeah. In a speedrun, that's like the most annoying thing when you get like really good spam sprays off, and then there's just one man so that one knows off. So now they come towards him, and he just has to like finish it off. Yeah, this this RNG, it's not like the biggest RNG, but it can still lose a lot of time towards the run, especially in late game. So the reason he actually goes into first person to look at the sunset. It's not only because of scenery, but mm. Maru will also face the direction after the cutscene that he was looking if you're in first person. Yeah. Because I think he's like facing the mayor or like the uh, normally, hotel, no? Yeah, normally you're facing against the mayor and the hotel. But now I'm gonna face against the shine and I can do the immedi immediately, immediately a water slide. It wasn't too bad, Manta, but it can always be better. The splitting is completely random. The better the splitting is, the better the purple base will be. Because they don't run away that far then. Now, Serena Pitch 2, a secret shine. One of my least favorite shine for many different reasons, because it's so difficult. It's in endgame and I always refuse to do the harder strats because... It's hard, it's hard. The secret shines are not easy in a late game now. Yeah, now he's gonna do some precise wall kicks to get up into the secret, and then the secret itself is a pretty long secret. Especially if you die at the end, you can lose like almost a minute, so... Yes. Not too bad. And that's the secret. Very nice. That, that jump at the end is called momentum spin jump. When you roll out, uh, uh, roll out against like a roof or like a slope, you're able to maintain your speed. And with the spin jump, you will have a lot of distance and some, high, some height. But it's really hard. If you mistime it, you have no backup there for that shine or that's, that jump, jump there at the end. Because yeah. usually you would wait a little bit longer and then uh, jump normally. But if you do that momentum spin jump, you have to get it, because otherwise you won't cut the distance and actually die. And being dead at the very end of the secret is a big time loss, so... It's about 40 seconds, so yeah, run is over at this point. And now, you're supposed to normally go through the casino... <coughs> uh, not casino, hotel, to get the pineapple, because it's not there. Yoshi wants pineapple, but we, no we want the banana. Do you know why? Because we can do cool stuff like that. So usually when you would backflip there, you would actually not get through that little crack on top there. But if you throw the banana at the peak of your jump, then it actually like pushes Mario back a little bit, and yeah. you can actually click through there. Yeah. 
normally like it's all the way in the second floor. You have to go through the whole like attic and stuff to get the pineapple just to op open Yoshi. Then in the attic there's Boos sleeping and uh, that's how you normally get to the shine. And now it's the casino. Another secret shine. And there's a skip in there too. Very old skip. I just imagine like casual players having to play through all of the casino games and like Especially like the one where you have to spray like the little uh, um, the, the plates to have it all right. Like yeah. that takes forever. The slots and the blade at the end. But we speedrunners want to bonk sometimes there and flip out of bounds. That's a bad angle. Okay, I will make it safe. Not holy one. But yeah, that's a that's a casino skip. Serena Beat 4 secret, Got also cycle paced. And there's a momentum spin jump, a different kind of momentum spin jump at the end here. Oh, I will save it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Too bad. It's alright. Best with the insane save, and then yeah, I've done that save so many times, but I was like thinking, yeah, I can do it, fine. I was supposed to have a better angle there, but I jumped a bit, a little bit too soon. That's why I had to do, go to the first person. Now since I died, I don't wanna like waste any more time, so let's just make it like a like a big old baby strats. So yeah, with that momentum spin jump, it's. Like if you uh, run on a slope and like you continue running, you can actually keep the speed as long as the slope is there. If you go on the flat ground, you would actually lose that running speed. Uh, but because the cube is like always like turning and stuff, you stay on the slope. Like it counts as a slope, and then at the end you have to do like a, a fast spin, and then you can get like a hyper momentum spin jump. Yeah. Now it's another RNG shine. Luckily enough, it's in a casino, so that's why it's an RNG sign. Gimpo White is uh, kind of famous for many reasons. After this shine, if there's any donations, feel free. Now we have to explain the, like uh, how the Gimpo kind of works, because I've seen many runners like sometimes misunderstand how Gimpo works uh, with the extra cycles and the fruit cycle. You want to get the fruits, so you're able to damage Gimpo. And after damaging him, he will get like a so-called like a just a random cycle, which is not like an extra cycle. We can, we'll explain when the fight goes. So yeah, now he jumped over the hall to make him spawn a little bit earlier. And now we have to see if he gets fruits or not. And that's the fruits, and he does. So it's RNG which cycle, you, uh, which uh, if you get fruits or not, but not entirely because. Um, after you get fruits, there will be a different cycle uh, that is given. So the best, like the least amount of cycles you can get is actually five, because you get a fruit, a non-fruit, fruit, non-fruit, fruit, fruit, fruit. Yeah, you cannot get two fruits in a row, basically. Now I wait for the enemies, I cancel the cycle, and now I have a chance to get a fruits again. And that should be it. No extra cycles so far. Yeah, and the reason why he let the enemy spawn there, like if you cancel the cycle too early, then you will actually get another one. So you have to make the bubbles or the enemy spawn the tank or what it is. Yeah. That's the bubbles. And now, is it the Pelez RNG? Let's see. Oh. That's an extra cycle now, so I have to cancel it as soon as I can see it. Okay. There's also some situations where it forces like something, or there's a higher chance. For example, if you uh, have less than half health, then it will give you coins, or if you have like less than half water, it will give you uh, bubbles more. Yeah. Often. 
if he if he gives you coins because of your low health, it's supposed to be a fruit, but it ignores the fruits for for a while just to heal you. <laughs> if there is any donations, feel free to read them. We have a twenty-five dollar donation from correct me if I pronounced wrong, Kainalo. I think it's a Finnish word. Yeah. Um saying hey samurai man when did you evolve from samurai boy and how did it feel <laughs> thank you so much for your donation thank you this sign my least favorite sign in the whole game <laughs> that was actually one of my favorites when i played no, are you serious yeah i'm that kind of guy so basically he has to clean the beach um He's playing on a Japanese version, which is actually harder than the PAL version because you have to clean all of the beach, like pretty much all of it, and there's some invisible goo. Like they actually made it easier in the later version because it was just too hard. Because sometimes you don't even see where goo is left over, so you have to have like a set pattern where you know you will always spray to to always get it. Yeah, and overall, good spam spray also helps, like being able to do it consistently. Now you see, I have to spray everywhere because I'm not sure have I missed any spots. Yeah. So on the PAL version, you only have to clean like 95%, so you can like leave off spots and finish faster. Like that's one of the errors where the PAL version saves time. Like it loses time on uh, loading zones, but the Japanese version loses time on this level particularly because you have to spray more. That was still a good time, like averagely a good time overall. Over 2 minutes, 20 seconds left in a timer. It's considered a really good time on JP. That was episode 6. And you remember episode 7? It's Shadow Mario. We'll have to get him. Then we have only Noki Bay left. Which is my favorite stage in the whole game. He's in a casino. Having some, having some party there. I don't think I will get this quick kill. I haven't practiced it enough. Nope. Uh, still got him ready to be a little. So. Yep, it is. There's a first checkpoint would have been upstairs here. So it's really good to stop him before it. Now it's time for Noki Pay. If there's any more donations, feel free. Oh yeah, we have a twenty-five dollar donation from Makibaki saying, "Shh, shh, get shine, shh, 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 shine, get, get shine, get." Thank you. <laughs> now, like in a good, re really good base runs, you have no RNG anymore. Now it's up to your skill be able to maintain a good base, and Rocky base really, really hard to level. So basically, when he goes up there, the mole is either throwing like those oh. scoops or he's throwing bombs, like every four seconds, I believe. Yep. So you want to make the uh, the fastest cycle, and if you're only a tiny bit later, you have to wait those four seconds out to actually get the next cycle. So it's actually really important to have like precise movement and get there as quickly as you can. Yeah. There's like two different cycles people usually get to. The fastest one being like, you have no room for error. You have to get everything. And that's what I always try to get. Then I just try to get the, the second fastest, if possible. But that was, that was still good. Any more donations? Can I talk about uh, our charity instead? Yes. So at WitchCon Europe, we are raising money for the Movember Foundation, a charity dedicated to stopping men from dying too young. They focus on taking action against prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and also help with mental issues. So if you would like to help a very good cause, please consider donating and thank you. We are over $3,600, which is amazing. <laughs> Okay, pet 2. You have a cool blooper fight, but we're gonna skip him. It's faster, that's fine. 
I really like those wall kicks. Like that whole section, this oh, <laughs> it's like so fun to practice as well. Yeah, it is. So at the end, he's gonna use a spring oh. that actually expands if you spray it. So we're gonna do like a quick hover, and then uh, it was gonna expand and push us through the wall. Or dive instantly, which is false. Nice. So you're supposed to actually fight the blooper there and then go through a hole to the shine, but we can bypass that with the spring. Yeah, that's a really easy clip. Next shine works as a, like a, a tutorial for under, under level movement, because a shine after this is a boss fight underwater called Ilu. Ilu mode. My favorite boss fight. Some people disagree with that. <laughs> it's the red coins in a bottle. And I'll be using a wide turn, the first person quite a lot. Turning around is much faster in a first person, especially underwater. And with the first person you're able to hold forward, so you're able to gain speed in a first person. Because usually if we would turn around here, it would take forever, but with the first person, he's just going like out and in in the first person. Grips all the coin really fast. If you, if you would miss one in a casual playthrough, you would have to go to like a current that puts you up again. Nice. So what he actually did there is he uh, held neutral when he landed, and that way he actually lost all of his speed and he could go instantly back. Like if you actually would hold backwards, when you land, you would actually still have forward momentum. Mm, so yeah. That was a nice little movement optimization. Yeah, that's, that's the secret of that sort of strat there. Holding the neutral stick. Neutral. And now it's the time for the boss fight. Elo mode. Uh, before the fight starts, there's eight teeth you have to spray. And after that, the fight is over and the cutscene starts. And there's a cutscene skip I'll go try to go for. And it recovers eye frames. When you take damage in this game, you'll have eye frames, so you're able, not, able to not take damage immediately afterwards. And the strat I'm gonna go for is a, we call it 6 2 strat. So with the 6 2 strat, I'm gonna spray all 6 teeth before, before he's gonna force close in the mouth. And I'm gonna play around like close in the mouth. Because other, normally, if you spray a, a corner tooth, he would go back down, and you have you would have to wait. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit this bubble just to a rare pill. You can take over. All right. So basically, when he like spins around, then he opens his mouth, and then it's on a timer. But if you have like really good sprays, you can get up to six teeth before he actually starts spinning again. So you have it here to like pre-clean one, and then you want to go for the four middle ones, because if you have the other ones first, he's actually going to go down, so you don't want that. So the four middle ones, recover, and now we got six. Now he just has to get out, back in again, and now he's going to take damage here to be invincible. Hopefully, yes. That was a really good fight. So usually the cutscene will play there, but if you are in the damage animation, it will actually skip the cutscene and you save 15 seconds. So that was really nice. Yeah. That's why it's my favorite fight in a whole game. It's so technical, like anything kind of go wrong, and it developed from 4 teeth strat to 5 teeth, then eventually 6 teeth. So it has gone a long way. The gold tooth, it counts as a, like a middle tooth, so he wouldn't go back down. It's not, just other gold teeth in a corner that will damage him, then he, have, he will go down. Pinasimo, one more time, will raise him. Also with the ear fight, you, you have to go spray the golden tooth early, but he actually can spin clockwise or counterclockwise. So you actually have to keep track of that and uh, know where the gold tooth is because it can be in opposite sides depending on how he spins. Also, I I found out, I found out about this like maybe a couple of weeks ago, but eels had different eyebrows, so that's also a good indicator which side I wanna, I wanna, I wanna look at. The other one has a longer eyebrows than the other one. 
So yeah, now he, we have to wait for Piantismo to finish so we can like play around, take a look. There he is. So Remper, no sound fun fair. Make sure you touch the black. You hawk it. Just make sure. <laughs> In a one when he shines, you will get the blue coins at the same time up there. And you will easily forget the timer. It just keeps running and you lose the race. And you start over. And you also saw here, he got into first person. Because usually if you talk to Piantissimo after the cutscene, you will face Piantissimo. But because he went into first person... I knew I would bunk there. <laughs> Because he went into first person, he was actually facing the shine, and he can like directly jump dive into yep. it. Now, if anybody used to watch my streams a long, long time ago, this was the shine that decided everything for me always, and it has become became my favorite shine for that reason. And it, in my opinion, the hardest shine in the game. A Noki Pay Six, a Shell Secret, really hard movement, and even harder movement with the secret. I'm gonna use the ropes. Let's see how it goes. So for years we would actually take the cliffs, but there's a threat that was a tough threat before, and now people are doing it in runs where you actually go off and on the, ro the ropes here. Oh, it's fine. That's what it both look like. Nice. <laughs> Not a secret. No, I'm just gonna go for it. So yeah, these platforms are also cycle-based. Um, the fastest one is the green cycle, where the green pack is on top. Um, but yeah, you, you can't do any mistakes to actually get there in time, so he took the blue cycle there. The ending can also be really scary. <laughs> I was ready for it. I would lose my belt record runs and personal best bases in that secret shine <laughs> all the time back in the day. Now it's just one more shine, then we have cor Corona and the final fight. It should be like under 120. Mm -hmm. There's a quick kill here, but I believe it's frame perfect. I'll try it though. Yeah, like, you have to crown pound in a certain time and spam spray in a certain time. It's too hard. It's pretty much the dust strat, and I just messed up there. <laughs> so, he's climbing up here. The next point is here. It's unfortunate. He climbed up all the way here. So yeah, now we collected all of the Shadow Mario Shines, so it's gonna allow uh, a different map of the field, which is like the flooded map, which uh, has Corona open, so now we can actually go to Corona and beat Bowser. If there's any more quick donations, feel free. Oh yes, we have a $5 donation from Anonymous saying, Always glad to see some speedruns for a good cause. Keep it up, Samurai Man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And we've got a $200 donation. Ooh. From Anonymous saying, get shine, shine get. Thank you so much for your generosity. Corona Mountain also can introduce really hard strats. Let's see how it goes. So yeah, the platforms with the spikes are like cycle based, so someone's gonna try to get like the quickest cycle. And you see how close it is there, so... Oh, that's unfortunate. Spam spray is RNG as well. I couldn't make the cycle anymore. The spikes are gonna g kill me immediately if I went for that. That would have been a, what we call Vast Corona. And then the boat, we all remember it's like really easy, you just spray and then you get to the end, right? Yep. Uh, I, f I think I died so many times in my casual playthrough. But as we speedrunners, okay. Here comes the rocket glitch, so... He um... Okay, yep. So he basically loads up the rocket and right before it launches, he switches his stance 
to like the sidestep and yep. then it stores the rocket input and in theory you can just infinitely if you have like the water infinitely uh, store the rockets and it can go infinitely high yeah well we only need two to get on top of them yeah and now the final fight the dime comes on a very last ground bound when i hit that the dime comes Oh, too early. You need to get a third on height so you get the able to hit the you're able to hit the the weak point. Because if you ground pound at a certain height it becomes like a stronger ground pound and you want that one to get that. The goop is also RNG so it can hit you. But it seems like it's not gonna happen. Too early again. It's fine, it's fine. Okay. And now, time when he uh, hits the platform at the bottom. And... Dime time. <laughs> so that was Super Mario Sunshine and percent. My current personal best is exactly like four minutes faster than <laughs> this time. <laughs> the current world record is... It has to stood over almost two years. It's way ahead of its time. One hour, 14 minutes, 40 seconds is the current world record. And my time is like just a minute off. And why? It's just a better movement and some better RNG. That's about it, really. This game has developed really far from easier strats to really hard strats. And did we met the glitch exhibition? Oh, yes. So please show us all the glitches. Put on memory card. So, glitch exhibition, it was met, so I'm gonna show you some glitches. You wanna explain the, the Wiggler then? Okay, I will do that. Let's start with that, because it's the easiest one, <laughs> probably. Right. It would be better to show it with a practice code, but I think it's just better if we show it this way. Yeah, so you just... Uh like you hit him three times and then uh, before the shine spawns, after the last hit, you go onto the, the map. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, Samaran Man actually uh, hasn't done this glitch before, I think, so he doesn't yeah. know what's gonna happen. I don't know, I've never seen it, I've never heard about this. Most of the glitches in this game are like, like not too interesting, there's just like minor funny glitches. There's out of bounds in every stage, though, so we can show that. You don't see this in any person runs anymore. So you're supposed to wait for him to stop completely. So you're able to get the si right cycle. So, like, after he does the, the last ground pound, he's gonna pull up the map, which interrupts the, the shine spawning, and will actually do some really cool things with the m music. Is it immediately after last ground pound? Yeah, but just before the shine spawns, so it's not like a precise timing. Really. Okay. Wiggler is in a certain cycle, depending on how you ground pound and stop him. Okay, now listen to the music. And now? Ground pound and then the map of C. Now? Now it's slowing down. Do you hear? Okay, press C again. <laughs> it's getting really slow. And you can actually speed it up if you go map again. If you do it like really quick, like go see and then see again. No, it's really fast. <laughs> That's like a vinyl version. This is still going on, like. Yeah, you can still manipulate it. Like if you do it a little bit later, it's gonna slow down again. Pretty cool. All right. Okay. I think we're gonna move on to the next shine, or like we can show the the one that is here. <laughs> I was thinking, is the shine gonna spawn anymore? <laughs> yeah, it's still gonna spawn. <laughs> I never knew about that. Huh? How did you know about it? Uh, I think Stelzik told me. Oh, okay. Stelzik is my old rival in this game. 
So there's a way to get out of bounds here, or like inside the inside the. Uh, hold up. So there's like a place where you actually go into go to Sam, but the loading zone is not here. But we can still clip through and be in the egg. Yeah. <laughs> I read for a long time ago winding this way with a different method and I was so sad the loading zone is not there and I obviously knew it's not there. Delfino Plaza has so many different like places to clip out of bounds and I cannot show it in this file I think. Yeah, I cannot show it because I don't have the I don't have the the, the shine in uh, Plaza gate anymore. So you see that shine over there? That's supposed to be like 30, but now it's now it's saved, so I cannot have the shine anymore. But I can show you like one of the ways to get out of bounds or like make it invisible, Delfino. So all of the houses you just saw are turning invisible, but the hitboxes will still be there. Oops. And he's gonna end up on top as well. So some things are still visible, trees, toads, but yeah, the ground. You can see, you can see everything. Like there's the there's the nozzles, but the houses and everything is still there. It's everything is visible. So it's just pretty much memorizing like how the how the map looks like. So that's pretty cool. Like you can see everyone standing on nothing. No, it's there. But the loading zones are also still there, so you can actually answer like different levels. Yeah, you can see the like the damn letter is not there when you look at the <laughs> from the other side. There's a one glitch I can show you in a uh, Rico one. I was messing around a long time ago in practice with a tentacle in a Rico one, and uh, you'll see. I was just messing around and I found something interesting. Most of the glitches are pretty much out of bounds, so it's not like there's no like graphical, I think graphical glitches I can show, unless with the Bianco, the crack with the Yoshi. Oh yeah. I'm sure you know about this, Wilco. Mm -hmm. Yep. With so he, he's gonna like clip in the container now with the tentacle. <laughs> You can get it all the way to the other side, but it eventually stops and starts to bite. So yeah, there's nothing. Oh yeah, I think... I don't think there's a rocket nozzle in episode 1. Uh, I don't think so, no. Yeah, then it, there would have been a lot like another glitch to get out of bounds by using the water level to raise up all the way to the high, but... I would have to use a different episode, but let's just get to the next stage. I think I've also the the very recent one in a peanut park. You've seen that one, have you? Um, I'm not sure which one is it. Ep episode two, episode two with the Yoshi. The bombs, the bombs. Oh yeah, where you like bounce off and yeah. go all the way to the top. Yeah, I've seen that one. It only works with episode 2 because the, the mall is there and he's shooting all the the bullet pills and <coughs> the bombs. So we need we need Yoshi. Mall is always gonna throw four bombs before the other ones explodes. Then on a fifth one, I can just grab that, and some weird things will happen. I hope it was the I was hope it was the. the I don't I don't know which one it is. So we'll see. After this, he's supposed to like. This one is gonna disappear immediately if I don't grab it. So you see, it's supposed to be blue, but I'm not doing anything. So some weird things will happen with the with with pop bomb. <laughs> I don't know why, but it happens. It's pretty nice. You can go infinitely if you want, and in this game, you cannot press the pause, so I'm better gonna drop the imme immediately so I'm able to go to the next stage. The game has prevention that if you're gonna game over or something, you're not gonna able to press the pause and exit the level or something. So that's a pretty neat and very new glitch. 
Like, he would have been able to go, like, all the way to the top, and the ceiling of the levels is actually so high that if he would fall down, it would take one hour and 20 minutes for Mario to actually land. So. Oh, yeah. I can show that, too. Yeah. Quickly, before I go to Pina, Pina Village. This happened once, one time in a run, and I tested how long it will take me to just drop down all the way from the sky. It requires... I'll just take episode 3 because the the <coughs> the Koopas are there. Do we have time for a donation? Yes. So we've got five dollars from Aviv. Is that right? Is that correct? Um, would just like to say that I really enjoy watching your speedruns and I applaud the good cause as someone with high functioning autism who also finds it hard to cope with life sometimes. Show us your Kermit sweater. Oh, I, I don't think he can hear us. But thank you, thank you so much for coming here and watching our speed dress at ESA. So what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna hit the <coughs> crafted trading, I think it's called, at the same time when I take damage. There we go. So now he's actually hanging on the ceiling on top of the level at the very, very top. And he's so high up, if you look down, it doesn't even show the island. Yeah, like it doesn't show the island. If I press B, I'm gonna drop down, I cannot press the pause, I would have to restart the game, and it takes one hour, 20 minutes. Uh, he's actually so high up that he's above the sun, because the sun is also on a certain level. Yeah. So... Yeah. But luckily, when I'm grabbed, grabbed there, I can exit the level easily. Next up, I will show the out of bounds in a Vienna village. It's really, really easy, and I think it's the only way to get out of bounds in Vienna village. I cannot think of anything else. Mm. Every stage has one way to get out of bounds at least, excluding like the inside areas like casino and. <coughs> well, there is actually, I think there's a way to get out of bounds in casino, isn't there? Mm, yeah. Maybe I haven't seen that properly. <coughs> I'm gonna use the water, the water ball, <coughs> to get out of bounds. Pretty much it's like, it's out of bounds technically because I'm not like, underneath the dead zone. I can even just stand there for like hours and nothing happens. Like man, Wilco mentioned about the dead plane. There's no dead plane there then. So you go over here, you swim down and you're underneath the dead plane now. So basically, if you would like fall down, you would go through the death plane, but there's also like the ground level that's under the death plane. So sometimes you can like warp below the level and then uh, you can just move around. You, you can't really get up anymore. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm stuck here. I cannot even hit the death plane. It's like in a certain height. Mm. I remember when that happened the first time on accident in Noki 6 once to me, like, it just straight warped me down through the death plane, I was <laughs> like, what is going on? Yeah, the the moving bags can, like, also interrupt interrupt your, like, position good a while, good a much. Then, uh, this one, uh, there's, like, really weird thing about the underwater movement in a Noki. You're able to run in a high speed, for some reason. You don't need the Shadow Mario, but here's a way to get out of bounds. Now I have to manipulate the water level. Up down here. This is used in one funny shines to get the to get to get the blue coin before entering the eel fight. I think I have to get the high speed. So yeah, you're able to run in a high speed all, uh, down here, <laughs> for yeah. some reason. And obviously if you put both your hands behind your back, that's how you run fast, we all know that. Yeah, of course. Fun fact, the water slide is still faster than this. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't water slide down here, for some reason. It's uh, probably the music with the, the water. Like, this is counting as a water I'm standing on. You can hear, like, the splooshes. Yeah, we can. I think it's uh, time to show the one more glitch. S so rocket storage, you can do it infinitely, and uh, 
I'm gonna sh I'm gonna story like let's say let's, let's say like ten times and see how high high how high we go. So that's the one he used to get to the Bowser fight at the end, where he used two. But imagine using ten. Oh. It's the animation with the Mario's movement there when you hold the target that interrupts the rocket. That makes it possible. Ooh, that was close. I missed the got miscounted so far, so let's just see how high we go. If I move anything, if I like move at all, I just lose all the storage. So I start step off and we're gone. So yeah, that was Super Mario Sunshine, and I stream really often on Twitch, slash, slash Samurai Man, and I want to give a shout out to my my community, thanks for so much for supporting me, and my Discord. Thank you ESA for having me, thank you everyone who watched, and Wilco, special thanks to you for helping with the commentary. No, no problem. Hope you have an amazing TwitchCon, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Samurai Man.